Greetings. Welcome to Ghosts Are Near, where we discuss and actively explore paranormal phenomena. I'm your host, Keith Johnson, the co-founder of New England Anomalies Research, and my usual co-host, Sandra, and co-founder of NEAR, is again in the control booth. Hello, Sandra. She's bouncing up and down and waving, so she is here. You just don't see her. She's a little off camera. And I'd like to begin by saying a quick hello to our friend Jana. Jana, who we know by that rocky place by the water, and she is a devoted MASH fan. So we have that in common with her. Tonight, I have a very special, interesting guest. And uh, no stranger to Ghost Are Near. He, uh, some years ago, worked with us in the control booth and uh, knows his way around the studio. And actually, that has the origin of how this, this show all came about, because um, my friend Jesse Correa, who I've known for many years, has done a documentary, and it really has been a labor of love and blood, sweat, and tears as well. A great deal of emotion, as well as research, went into it. It is called The Bloody Reef, A History of Brenton Point. I've watched this. It is an excellent documentary. I very, very highly recommend watching it, especially to anyone who is interested in history, the paranormal, or who is a Rhode Islander, of course. Now, Jesse, welcome to Ghost Thy Near. Thanks, Keith. It's great to be back. Yeah, great to have you back here. Great to have you on camera. Oh, yeah, this is a different position, but right, yeah, I exactly. Like it. I like exactly. It. exactly. So, uh, the Bloody Reef, a history of Brenton Point. Yeah. Now, I've known of Brenton Point for quite a few years, but I wasn't really that familiar with the history of it. I knew it had a reputation for some paranormal activity, and it's uh, quite a resort for some people who like to vacation or live there. But um, tell us how this all started, how it originally came about. Yeah, I've been going there since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, in the 80s, I was down there a lot uh, at night. Yeah. And we, we would run into odd things, I, would, I, I guess. We'd run into sacrifice. Sacrifice? Yeah, there's a cult. Uh, cult activity. Uh, it takes, that works out of there. Oh, and we would run into a dangerous place to be at night. <laughs> oh, we avoided the nights when there was too much noise back then. Uh, yeah, we'd run into things like that. So uh, just got interested in, in not only what was going on then, but what had been going on there. Yeah. Okay. And so then it started like a 25 years of research. 25 years of research. Wow. Uh, that is a labor of love. Yeah, we track it pretty much in documentary from pre-European uh, occupation. Mm -hmm. uh, from the Narragansett Indian woman herself I spoke with and spoke with me right up to when it becomes a park, uh, through all the families that lived there and everything that happened to them, mm -hmm. the, the battles and uh, the tragedies and the good that happened there. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so that's a, it's a full history of one piece of land. Mm -hmm. Now, why do you say the Bloody Reef? A lot of uh, death and bad things have happened there mm -hmm. through the centuries. Yeah. Uh, it's it's the entrance to Newport. Mm -hmm. You had a lot of slaving going on okay. with yeah. the pirates during the yeah. colonization days. You had the pirates coming on. You had the trade, like, so the indented the slaves going in and out of there. Mm -hmm. uh, you had uh, it, there was a, there was an Indian village there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this uh, the immense woman who had just who passed about five years ago. I can't pronounce her last name, but mm -hmm. Ella, right, uh, did tell me that was was a prime spot, mm -hmm. and the Narragansett and the Wampanoag shared it. Okay. Because of the probably the, the fish land, and everything. The fish yeah, right. you could put a net in and fill it without trying, and the soil would grow anything. Right. So it was uh, they would share it back and forth mm -hmm. between each other. Uh, but with colonization, with smallpox, oh, yeah. with as I, yeah, I mentioned in there, a lot of the other uh, the other groups that could have come through, such as the North, there was a lot of mm -hmm. uh, pain. Yes, yes, certainly. And uh, recorded on that land just as well as it was mm -hmm. anything else. Okay. Now, of course, we're talking about pre-Columbian. We're talking about the Norse, yep. um, other European colonizations, and of course, they, as you mentioned, they did bring their diseases with them. Uh, the native population didn't didn't have a, an immunity against that, and uh, so whole tribes must have been devastated and wiped out. 
Yeah, I had to learn a bit about smallpox, unfortunately, which uh, yeah, it's in there. It's a pretty bad disease mm -hmm. that uh, most likely was the cause of the wiping out of a, a particular right. Right. village. It's interesting. Um, a lot of people think of uh, Newport, Rhode Island, and especially this area as the, the mansions, the beautiful mansions, um, the fishing industry, the nice restaurants. Uh, it's it's just uh, thought of as quite a, a vacation resort there mm. and a place for tourists to visit. But um, it has more of a dark history, especially this area, right? Yeah, the families that lived there didn't do well. The the first biggest one was the first mansion that actually in Newport Town in that area was built there. It was called the Reef mm -hmm. by uh, Theodore Monroe. Okay. And he, uh, Davis. Right. Uh, he, he built this huge mansion down there. Uh, his kid shot a servant by mistake. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, killed a, a servant. Killed a servant the by mistake. Accident, yeah. by, they said he just pointed the gun the wrong direction and pulled the trigger. So. Yeah. Uh, he got a divorce. Mm. Uh, he kind of lost it. Ended up in an asylum in, in uh, Florida. Oh, yeah. And they uh, uh, they basically let go of the property and the Budlongs mm -hmm. bought it next. It was Theodore Budlong. He was yeah. a... Uh, he invented the first electric car. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Way back then, way back in the 1900s. But they didn't like it the idea. catching on now, too. <laughs> yeah, they didn't like the idea then, so no, it didn't work. No. But he was with uh, one of the major manufacturers out in Detroit and moved here. Okay. And his family, again, had yeah. a well, well documented divorce mm -hmm. and family tragedies. Mm -hmm. And one of his sons actually uh, was doing a reenactment of Gettysburg. Mm -hmm. And uh, Fell off his horse and was impaled on his own saber. Oh my goodness! Wow. Uh, so there's a lot of strange, uh, yeah, almost uncanny things which followed the people who lived there. They came in nice, and when they left, it still followed them to where they all yeah. had uh, a lot of bad things happening to them throughout their lives after that. Yeah. Now, Mr. Davis, he was an interesting character. Uh, he was a, an Egyptologist, correct? correct? Yes. Yeah, he was yeah. with Carter just before they. They and Earth King Tut. Mm -hmm. And I always pronounce this, and I hope I pronounce it right, an Ankaton? Yeah, Ankaton. I mean, yeah. we're Americans pronouncing Egypt, ancient Egyptian names. So I yeah, guess, you know, yeah, I mean, I researched it, but the pronunciation right, right. are. You know, but, um, yeah. yeah, King Ankaton. So he, uh, he's the one who discovered his tomb. Yeah, and he was, um, of course, the pharaoh who changed everything. Uh, Correct. Their god worship. He believed in monotheism. He was going to worship one god, the yep. sun god, and of course, all the Egyptian populace had to go along with the pharaoh. Correct. And uh, he wasn't very popular because of that. But, uh, no, yeah, he's the only one to be wiped out after he... Yeah, they just uh, kind of erased a lot of his... Uh, he had moved the capital city, yep. built his own, mm -hmm. and after he died, they destroyed the capital city he built and destroyed all records of his reign. Wow. And that was like the only time anyone ever did that. Yeah, and, and he, he was uh, the father of uh, Tun Am 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 Amun, right? Yes, he was. Yeah, yeah. and um, some people, he, very strange about him, some people because of the elongated shape of his face, you see statues of him, don't they all look alike? And uh, some people think he was part alien or... Uh, yeah, well... He may, you know, he, he changed a lot of things possibility. In, in, yeah, in Egypt and the worship, so uh, they wanted to kind of forget about him afterwards. Yeah, they did, they just wanted to wipe him out. Yeah. And he's the only one. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. they had some artifacts there too. He, uh, Davis had an extensive collection of his oh, own. Oh, okay. Were these considered cursed artifacts? Uh, I don't know if anyone's tied to that yet because there's no there's no list. Yeah. They were given to the New York Museum mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. I've tried to get them. They don't show them anymore. I've tried to get them to give me a list of the artifacts they right. have. Yeah. Still in storage, but uh, haven't really gotten any replies ever on yeah. if they'd ever give me an actual list of things that they got from the uh, mm -hmm. estate. Now, during the filming of this documentary, at one point uh, you came across the uh, anomaly. And uh, to set this up a little bit, uh, of course, uh, our friend uh, Joe Burke, who some years ago was a, a guest on Ghost Our Near, and he was doing his private film, Exchequer. Mm -hmm. And right. he, uh, he uh, wound up filming some kind of shadow figure or something. Yeah, and he had have a, been there. Yeah, I should have probably brought that with me. Uh, yeah, there was a picture of a... Uh, it's a, it's a spirit energy, I guess it looks like. Yeah. It's like a white fog on the branch. Right. 
Well, I believe that's been on our show, so anybody look it up if you want to see that anomaly yeah, that Joe, uh, Joe Burke caught. Yeah, Exchequer, but um, you you did uh, come across with an anomaly as well, right? Yes, we did. Yes, mm -hmm. we did, as a matter of fact. A very uh, odd one. Yeah. Could you explain it to us, please? Uh, it was actually during the day, so it wasn't even a nighttime shoot. Right. right. Uh, we were walking through with Don Estrella, uh, who is a new renowned psychic. You remember from the Walkman case? Yes. He worked right. with us. And uh -huh. we were walking through. He was trying to get vibrations and mm -hmm. to lead us in directions on where we might want to go with the research or with the shoot, what we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And during it, uh, we didn't notice when we filmed it. It was when, when uh, our cameraman and editor was checking it. Mm -hmm. And he's an expert editor. Yeah. And he was noticed that there was a small flicker Mm -hmm. um, one, I think it's like one tenth of a second. It mm -hmm. says it on right. the anomaly clip. And because he was slowing things down a bit and didn't understand why there was no reason for something to be that short a period of a flicker on a mm -hmm. on film. So he slowed it down and was able to capture the what happened. Uh, and turn, and then he's the one who named the anomaly. Mm -hmm. So I just stay with it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Interesting. And um, any other uh, things that really like kind of got in the way of your filming or seemed to be? Uh... Oh, it's constant. Really? Uh, bad luck was nothing but what we had. Mm -hmm. um, well, a documentary itself is so difficult to make. So much goes into it. And then you've got the, um, the history of this place that uh, it seems like there's something working against you while you were doing this uh, production, like almost as if something did not want the story to be told. No, and that, that would lead to one thing I could say. Yeah, we had everybody who left, uh, kind of left me with everything because they didn't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. In fact, most of them don't even go down there anymore. Really? Because of what they were, we ran into while we were, while we were doing this investigation. Um, right. We had Ali, who was a psychic and could uh, did psychic drawing. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, she, it, it's going to sound nuts, but this is what I was told. She was supposedly haunted by the uh, the wolf spirits, which are there mm -hmm. in her own home. Okay. Uh, Joe suffered some type of cyst that nobody could identify what it was. Really. And once he stopped being involved with the project, it cleared up. Mm -hmm. um, Fred, our cameraman and editor. Uh, just dropped it halfway through because he, uh, the anomaly he saw, and also a piece of evidence he would never show me because that one got him worth really? the anomaly, but I never got to see it, so I don't know what it was. Do you think it was cult related? Uh, no, it, it was, he never really said some kind of light moving, mm -hmm. but it was enough to really uh, tie with the anomaly, make yeah. him feel like he didn't want everything to do with it. Yeah. Uh, we had two clearers. Uh, um, that went down and mm -hmm. caused a whole lot of issues. Really? How so? Uh, they tried to clear it because I had to leave for a little while. Yeah. And they told them just to do an investigation and they decided to do a clearing. Yeah. And that didn't do anything but make it mad. Really? And it, it was like a wall of, uh, if you, when you do investigations, it was like a wall of, of, of fear it can build. Mm hmm. That can that can get into you to make you feel fear. Yes, and it was so far from the property that just walking up to the stables was very difficult. They had because they tried to get rid of it, mm -hmm. which I told them not to do. Yeah, that wasn't well, our no, that's point there. Our right, point was right, to investigate. Exactly. Exactly. Don't play with it. You know, it's we we went there recently. Members of New England Anomalies Research, uh, myself, um, Dave Briss was there, Valerie was there, and Nathan. And uh, it was in the um, it was in the like late morning, early afternoon. In fact, uh, we just come from breakfast and uh, from brunch, and mm -hmm. it was a you know it's an overcast day, a little bit drizzly, but uh, it was not that that oppressive there. We didn't feel oppressed in any way, but nighttime can be a whole different thing. And um, I think we're going to uh, actually show that anomaly now that okay. you caught, so we can uh, get a good look at it and see. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd yeah, like to see it again what happens. Okay, okay, if we could uh, bring that up, please.
here and knock some of these walls down? When I was a teenager or a kid in my 20s and I came down here, I, I was guilty of throwing a few bricks and knocking down a few sections over here too. I think all kids have. So these actual full walls, so they were separate rooms. Right, right, exactly. That might have actually been a cooking area. Yeah. Uh, servants uh, lived there. Oh, or uh, employee servants lived there. So the cooking area might have been here. That is odd. That yeah. is odd. And strange that I wasn't followed by any more blips because obviously I've done quite a bit of uh, on location filming myself, mm -hmm. Sander and I have. And uh, usually when something starts acting up, it continues to act up. Uh, yeah, no, 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 on that particular tape. Uh, and you have thoroughly had it investigated. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have all the original tape, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, it's quite a few of them. Right. Uh, if, there was a, if there was anything else in any other ones, I haven't. I have to go through them. So. I do believe that uh, there are spiritual forces which can interfere with uh, recording equipment or electronic equipment. You know, there's some um, times we've caught examples of EVP, and then they're gone the next day. Yeah. You know, with strange things like that. Uh, we would have they manipulate cameras that uh, you'd be taping mm -hmm. doing EVP, or you'd be taking pictures. Right. And uh, you. And when the stable's always cold, mm -hmm. um, it would just, they would, they would die. But they wouldn't die slow. The cam would just close. Really? Done. Mm -hmm. And the tape would go off. 
and no matter what you did, you're up, up in the stable, up in the back property where you're yeah. investigating where the force is. Mm -hmm. You can't get it to work again. Right. You go down to the where the car is, mm -hmm. uh, turn on the camera, it comes on fine, there's a full charge on the battery. Mm -hmm. We had that multiple times. Wow. It just shut the equipment off on us, basically. Mm -hmm. Now on the grounds there are, there is of course the stables yes. what's left of the the ruins of the stables yes. um, there's a lot of that left the bells right and the um, the mansion itself of course is is gone yeah the mansion is actually the hill if you know the property right. been, if you went there you'll mm -hmm. see a, a little house where the ranges are mm -hmm. that was the gardener shack okay there's a giant there's a big hill in front of it mm -hmm. where they have the Portuguese monument I believe right that's the house. Okay. What they did is uh, it, it was on fire, and when they put out the fire, uh, they didn't have any place to really put the stuff. It's a mansion. It was huge. Mm -hmm. So they, they tore it down and caved it in on itself and then buried the entire house. So the house and rooms are still buried under that mound. Mm -hmm. I see. It's yeah. kind of like a giant gray mound for a house because the house is still buried under there, complete mm -hmm. rooms. Really? And of course, there's the tower there too. Now, was that a, a mill or of sorts? It was a windmill. Yeah. Uh, okay. Because his original stable had burnt down. Mm -hmm. uh, it was. I'm not sure where the original stable was located, but it had burnt down, mm -hmm. and his horses had died. Oh, tragic. Yeah. So he'd had a architect build the first uh, is, is asbestos. Mm -hmm. It's stone and it has steel I beams, and it was the yeah. first construction of its kind in, in Rhode Island. Really? Because he wanted to make sure that nothing like that would ever happen again. Right. right. And then he put the water tower in. Mm -hmm. And it was a windmill. And if you go into the bottom section, you'll see a shaft hole that goes to the top. Mm -hmm. That the turning mechanism was. And the water, okay. Yeah. there was a water thing above it. And as the windmill would turn, it would force the water through the hose. I so see. if so, there was yeah. a fire on the property other than the stable, he would be able to have the wind power his own ah, hose to put the fire out because there was I no see. fire hydrants down there in those days. Right, yeah. And uh, Nathan, of course, our team member Nathan, he was kind of trying to look, peer out that window there and you could yeah. about reach it. <laughs> uh, that's where the water was basically, it's an empty thing. There used to be stone steps. Yeah, I, I saw the remnant of that. Uh, really cool architecture, I don't know why they destroyed it. Yeah. They, they came out the side of the tower all the way up to yeah. the side and in my uh, in my research I found out that was because when a uh, one of the arms of a windmill would rip you have to fix it yes and so that's what the stone stairs are for oh, you okay. would climb up okay. the stone stairs to get adjacent to the damage on the windmill and you'd be able okay. to fix it now there's quite a bit of graffiti all over the place because they are stone structures and um, that's what they do yeah, yeah. They got so some of it seemed uh, cult related uh, just not most of it but some of it seemed uh, cult related it's mixed in. Yeah. Now there is there is a um, a tree there, a very uh, interesting looking tree yes, on right. the grounds. Was that the hanging tree that was mentioned? Yes, it is. Um, that I got uh, from other people, and I got from my psychics too. I didn't tell them about it, mm -hmm. so I got it through several sources. We're a yeah. family of uh, praying Indians. Yes. Yeah, for Christian uh, Indians. Yeah. Were made examples of. Wow. Uh, well, where the tree now stands, I'm not sure and, if it's the same dates tree. back to uh, King Philip's War. Right? The King Philip's War, yeah, correctly. 1670s. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the funny thing about that tree is if you look at the bottom when you're there, yeah. you're going to notice that nothing, at least for about six feet around the base of the tree, grows any anything. It's really? all dirt, except mm -hmm. for under one branch where there's, yeah. a, where there's some some growth. And everywhere else is growth. Yeah, tree it's like a dead zone. Yeah. It certainly does have its own personality when you look at it. Uh, yeah, kids like it. They climb on. They sit on the branches for some reason. No yeah. one's, uh, kids will be kids. <laughs> maybe they're drawn to something. I don't yeah. know. But every time I'm going with kids. Now, Jesse, while we have time, I would like to get your contact info okay. because a lot of people are interested in this documentary. All right, and I'd be happy to answer any questions anyone has to ask. Okay. How can people get in touch with you? Um, would they like to throw that up for me? Okay. Oh, yep. There we are, right there. Yeah, it's right there. Okay. Okay. And also on that, I have a follow-up. The original film was shown in February. Mm -hmm. I have a follow-up in Cox to, for Cox TV. Uh, that's either going to be October or November. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you, this is an addition to the original. Yeah, the original one as you have here. Yes. Uh, this has a lot of the the night 
investigation, and yeah. it's best for the history. Yeah. And you get to see Don Estrella doing his psychic right. stuff, and it's it's great. Yeah. The other one isn't fancy or didn't take mm -hmm. forever. It's yeah. talking about the odder things we ran into. Right. We ran into a few extreme circumstances, to say the least, down there. Oh, yes. And I didn't really want to tie it up on that. Yeah. Uh, so we did another one. It's oh. uh, should be about an hour and a half. Good. It's mainly talking, but it's going to be talking about all the other I look, uh, I look things we ran that. into. I look forward to that. Now, we had our um, our good friend, uh, former TAPS member with us from years ago, Rich Heinig. Yes, he, was, yeah. he lives in Washington State now, but he was visiting, and uh, he took the ride down with us to um, to Brenton Point, mm -hmm. and he's somewhat uh, sensitive. He's, uh, he's always been somewhat sensitive, so he was picking up on some negative uh, energy, and th this was in the um, middle of the uh, day. He was picking up on some yeah. some rather negative energy, but uh, th that place at night, when when you watch, I've never been there at night actually, but uh, watching it, just watching it at night, that is. Uh, uh, we have the, the even the rangers. We have speaking. Even they'll say that the temperature uh, from like four feet out of the yeah. door is is mm -hmm. incredibly cold. It's, yes, it's freezing in there. Yeah. It's a stone structure, but right. It's cooking all day in, yeah. in, the, in the sun, and it still doesn't absorb yeah. any of the heat. Right. Now, I don't want to give away any spoilers, but uh, near the end of the documentary, you do issue a warning. Yes, I do. Yeah. Would you want to talk about that, please? Yeah. Yeah, we ran into some bad things. Uh, to make it fast, I was surrounded by a... Uh, we, we eventually we encountered a dark force. It was, uh, it was a wall of blackness that would encroach on us, and we would not be able to see, even in the outdoors, if you could see a quarter of a mile, you couldn't, couldn't quite see a quarter of a mile anymore. You'd notice trees were disappearing mm -hmm. and less and less scenery. You could see less and less scenery, like something was blotting yeah. out what was yeah. around you. You were getting sucked into something. Mm -hmm. and Almost like a vortex, would you say? Uh, my th I would thought someone could tell me what it was, see, because I got stuck in it. Yeah. If you were, you said you had gone in the stables, correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Some, some team members did, yeah. I ended up in the stables and... Uh, but not at night, certainly. No, one night, on my own. And my wife and Joe and my dog were outside, and she mentioned something about yeah. this black force not coming towards us, wow. but actually coming up around the stables like, wow. a, like a spider web. And I, yeah. I was inside doing an EVP, so she yelled, and I was kind of yeah. aggravated. And it's like, really? What? And I started to notice in the corner of the stables, yeah. the blackness, it, I couldn't see the corners anymore. Yeah. And little by little, uh, in the stable, a, it's about two stories, three stories yeah. tall, and there's a roof. Yeah. It was a night with a full moon. Yeah. But that uh, darkness it, was encroaching. The darkness encroached over the entire stable. It blocked off the window above me. It, wow. I was uh, basically standing in, I, I, it's hard to describe it. Wow. Standing in the total darkness. Yeah. And night vision didn't work on the camera. I had no idea of where I was. Mm -hmm. All I could hear was my wife's voice. That kept me grounded. Wow, good, good. She was there. Good thing. That kept me yeah. a wonderful wife. Now, um, will you come back and uh, share with us more when when the additional footage comes out? Because this is really fascinating. I would love to. I think it's important that uh, I think it's important the truth gets told about a lot of the stuff that you can run into, which yeah. is why I gave a warning. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's fun. Yep. Yeah. But. It, if it recognizes you too much, it can get really, really scary. And I think that's what most people don't yes. get when they do these be things. Be careful. Everyone be careful. Yes. Thank you so much, Jesse. Thank Appreciate you so much. It. Thank, Thank you so for much. being our guest. Oh, this has been a pleasure. Yeah. I love it. Yeah.